Hey guys, Slash King here. I decided to start a nice little guide series on Kerbal Space Program on my channel, so feel free to subscribe to not miss out. I'm going to begin with one of the simpler tasks in the game, which is achieving orbit. To more experienced players, this task often seems close to trivial, but to a new player, it usually is a great feat to establish orbit for the first time. I'm going to guide you through this step by step. First and foremost, you will want to get a mod that does not actually alter the gameplay of the game, at least I recommend doing so, that mod being Kerbal Engineer, or Kerbal Engineering Redux or something, I will link it in the description. Feel free to also get MacJab if you want, which I also would recommend to you, mainly for the Interplanetary Transfer Maneuver Node tool, but more on that in a later guide. These are just recommendations, you don't have to do it, though I suggest it. Next you will want to open the VAB, the place where you build rockets. I recommend to get into space planes at a later point, when you are more familiar with the game. You should get into rockets first. And you should see a new menu bar that has popped up in the VAB if you have opened it before already. Uh, the menu bar wasn't there. And that menu bar is from the Kerbal Engineering mod. You should not pay attention to that for now though. Instead begin building your rocket first. Now since you built the last stages first, you should take a smallish fuel tank. Only with a small and weak engine since you won't need the thrust as soon as you escape the atmosphere. You can see the thrust power of a rocket in every stage in the little Kerbal Engineer window, listed as Thrust Weight Ratio, or TWR. A TWR above 1 means you are able to lift off of Kerbin's atmosphere, a TWR below that means your rocket is not powerful enough to rise from the ground. In space it does not matter since there is no gravity pulling you down, because there simply is no such thing as down in space. After you have built your first stage, next you will want to attach a parachute to your part, Probably. I mean, assuming you want to land that thing again at some point, which I kind of hope for you. And yeah, now comes the most important stages after that, which is the lifter or launcher stage. You will, for that, want to attach a big powerful engine with a big tank below the rocket you just built, uh, which is also called your payload, because, you know, that's the important stuff, and yeah, your payload. If you did pay attention to the Kerbal Engineering window, you might have noticed that your thrust to weight ratio for your lifter stage might be a little low. We'll fix this now. There is a handy tool called a Delta V map for KSP. You can find it on Google if you Google for it, obviously. But I will probably link it as well in the description. You can read in that map that you need a total of 3800 Delta V to launch from Kerbin into Kerbin orbit. And to make sure you are successful, I would recommend not going below 4000 as a beginner though, because you know, that's just a rough estimate, it can be by far higher if you, you know, do something wrong. To achieve the 4000 Delta V we need for this, we will now radially mount pairs of two fuel tanks with engines attached to them around our rocket. Radially meaning, you know, around the rocket, not below it or whatever. You probably can see that in the video right now. One or two pairs should suffice for this little rocket, but you will certainly need more for bigger rockets, which you will be building later. And make sure you use struts, those metal things, you know. Uh, to cre create enough stability so your rocket won't wobble heavily while launching or, you know, it might crash, which is highly likely if it's wobbling. You could now use asparagus staging to create an even more efficient rocket, but that is a pretty advanced technique and I will most likely cover that in a later video instead of now. And if you're done creating your rocket so far and, you know, don't want to do asparagus staging, since I don't have video up on that yet, if I do have one there's probably a link right now in this video to click on. Uh, I would suggest saving your rocket and hitting the launch button, or you know, just saving the rocket and adding asparagus staging, if I have a video up on that already. Uh, anyways, since the rocket is now ready to go, yeah. Now, on the launch pad you will want to hit shift or the Z button to bring up your thrust to the maximum possible thrust for now. After that you should hit the T button to activate SAS and then space to launch. You can see a ship with WAS and D. SAS by the way is a control system that makes sure your rocket doesn't tip over or whatever, it, it helps you. Just assistance. Now you should try to keep the nose of your ship straight up. If your ship wobbles heavily at this point or tips over, you probably made a mistake in the staging or need to use more struts for stability. If one of your lift stages tanks are empty at this point, you can hit space to decouple them too. 
Now you should keep going up until you are at roughly 30k kilometers. In earlier versions before 1.0, this point is a bit earlier, I think at 25 or 20k kilometers, because the aerodynamics changed, but at 30k kilometers you should slowly turn your, uh, your ship towards the 90 degree point of the nav ball, which is by the way the orange or blue ball thing at the bottom of the screen. Next you should hit your M key to open up your map view. And you should expand your nav ball again by hitting the small arrow shaped button thing. And in the map view you should be able to see a path with an AP marker on it, which stands for apoapsis. The apoapsis is the highest point of your orbit. You should raise it to around 70 to 80 thousand kilometers because that is the lowest safe orbit height around Kerbin. So you know, below that you will fall down. And you can raise that that high by burning your engine towards the point of 90 degree on your nav ball, probably better slightly above it, because you know otherwise you're just gonna go sideways and not up, but you want to go a little bit up. Now you can time warp with a point and comma keys, and you should time warp to a point shortly before your apoapsis. If you want to, you can also hit F5 now to quick save your game, and I think it's F8 or F9 at a later point to load that quick save. Now that we have Apple apps, you should align to the marker you can see on the nav ball right now. It should be a green thing, circle with like a line going through it or something. And it should be close to the 90 degree point. You should align your ship to that now. And you should hit Z or slowly uh, build up your speed by hitting the shift button or whatever. And yeah, you should bring up your thrust again to burn towards it. And burning towards this marker increases your orbital speed and by doing so also your orbit uh, orbital height. And that's what you want to establish orbit, obviously. You want to keep doing this now, and rinse and repeat it. And you want to keep time warping to the apple apps, you know, close to it, as soon as it starts getting too far away of you. Because otherwise you'd be wasting big amounts of fuel. Well, not too big amounts, but you know, you'd be wasting fuel, and you don't want to waste fuel, because that's precious, and you need that. And, yeah, if you did everything right, at some point a second marker for your lowest orbital point, your periapsis, should appear. If you see that marker, you're nearly done. You need to raise it to a point above 80,000 km as well, and you are good to go then. Congrats, you just established your first successful orbit around Kerbin. And yeah, that's it for this video. If you like this guide, then feel free to leave a like or subscribe to my channel for upcoming guides like this. If you encountered a problem, obviously, feel free to leave a comment. But you can also leave one if you didn't encounter a problem, obviously. And yeah, see you in the next video, guys. Bye!